That's no more. That's an asshole. It wasn't a phase. Welcome back to the Senior Citizen Podcast, and we are here with Apex. Yeah, How you guys doing? Is this a monster promo? <laughs> <laughs> Not sponsored. Actually. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're all good. How you guys doing today? Good. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Good you don't sound that excited. I need more. I need more. Yeah, fucking awesome. <laughs> 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 Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can curse on here. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You always say it. Somebody will be in the middle of telling me a story, and then all of a sudden they go, wait, wait, can I curse on here? It's like, fuck this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we got it out of the way. Yeah. Out yeah. Of the way early. Right in the beginning. Yeah. So I want to hear a little bit about the band, how it got started, you know. Yeah. Sure. Um, so basically, we started playing together about four years ago um, through a mutual friend we met. Uh, the best way that you meet over, you know, Latin food with some chips and salsa and She's like, I know you used to be in bands, and I know these two guys that are in bands. You guys should talk. And, of course, we sat at the table, and it was, like, me at the end of the table, and there are 12 people down that way. And I'm like, well, this isn't conducive to talking. Um, and then eventually, once people started to leave and stuff, we got a little closer and we were able to talk. And then realized we had a lot of similar music tastes. Uh, and I'd been looking for, I've been doing, like, open mics and stuff prior. I've been looking to get back into another band. Uh we tried to play together in my family's garage. Uh, the hottest fucking Which was room. hot, super hot, but like just to jam out yeah. and everything and realize that, you know, we connected pretty well. In fact, one of the songs that is a current song in, in Apex's band, um, uh, Ascending Icarus, we started like the, there. In its infancy in was. Infancy, yeah. yeah, and then another song that we're also kind of messing around with now, like a riff, basically, we're turning into something potentially um, about four years ago and then. Uh, played together for a couple years. Yeah, so we started, I mean, you, you were almost in a previous band with us. I mean, played for like a couple months, and then it was like that that band, lots of drama, and broke that band off, and then I was like, hey, <laughs> Andrew. Then, like a phoenix out of the ashes. Yes, exactly. We started Apex from that previous one. Exactly. What, what was the drama? I like hearing like the tea. <laughs> You're like sucking my oh. I know. <laughs> So we had a musician in the band that left and he came back after that venture was not successful. He left to go be part of, you know, some bigger band that he thought was bigger, but it was not. Did they buy followers? <clears throat> Did, yeah. <laughs> Something. So it wasn't it like supposed to, I don't know if we're, we should talk about it. Wasn't it supposed to be like a famous pop stars drummer that yeah. was sort of involved in that initial band up in, um like Chicago kind of area or somewhere around there. Um, but yeah, that, so basically they, he was a guitar player. They needed a guitarist. Uh, we've been jamming out a little bit and then we're like, okay, let me learn all of your songs in like a month and a half because they had a gig at, um, pride in Ocala. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I was trying to, you know, get all that, uh, learned in time for the show and then ended up having to cancel the show. Yep, um, I came back down and was like, hey, I'm back. I want to be back in the band. <laughs> and we want you to get rid of this guy who has been working with us for like three or four months now, yeah. learning all of our songs. And we're like, hey, you left on good terms. And we moved on. I'm sorry your venture didn't work. And he's like, well, how about this? You can't use any of my fucking tracks. You can't use any of the songs that I wrote. And we're like... Oh shit, that sucks because we were just about to release the album. Like we recorded yeah. with him, um, and then he was like, "Hey guys, see you later," and then came back, and we were just about to release the music. And he's like, "Well, you can't do this, you can't do that," and we're like, "Fuck!" So we met together, and it ended up being like felt okay, but then just ended up breaking up from there, and we ended up releasing the album with his previous band. Um, but yeah, we and then we pretty much just started Apex. From, from, that, that, from the ashes from of, the, of that. Us two, and then the previous singer of that band. Yeah. Um, and then our, the initial. Our yeah, and, er, well, he wasn't. He wasn't, no. But, that, but um, and then Christian uh, joined to drum, and then we played for about, what, a year and a half mm -hmm. or so. Um, and then COVID hit, and oh, pretty joy. much everywhere closed. And then our singer moved uh, to Chicago during that time frame, and then uh, we spent exactly a year. 
searching for a singer <laughs> and got lucky because we decided. Very lucky. So I wasn't present for any of the drama. Uh, thing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 The tie. I'm Did new. she get filled in on all the tea? Like I, was, some was of it. Session? Some of that was new information, but I, yeah. I heard most of that. Yeah. So we're all learning today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we decided to go to Welcome to Rockville in November when they were doing the first one post COVID, mm-hmm. and we put up. We were like on the way to, the, to uh, Daytona, and I was like, "Well, why don't we just throw up one of these flyers looking for a singer exactly. in the music it was room?" Literally, like UF. one of like like you had talked about it, like putting up flyers to look for a new singer, and we had mentioned it multiple. You had mentioned it multiple times going to the music department and putting up a flyer, and we're like. We're trying to find the right time, the yeah. traffic, like we ended up not being able to because some, like the traffic was weird and then we're like on our way out going to a show. Yeah, I was we're like, let's just do the, it because if we don't do it, it now, we're not, we're, gonna, we're not going to do it. <laughs> we ran in there, put up the flyer. And, and then, then tell us the story of singing. how yeah. you found it. So I just, I saw, I was going to UF School of Music and I just saw the poster on one of the bulletin boards and it just said rock slash metal singer, question mark, and it had all this info on it. <laughs> And so I kept walking past it, and it kept catching my eye. I was like, mm, let me just take a picture of it. And so it was weeks later, and I just had this screenshot in my phone where I was like, I'm just going to email them. Or I think I, lo- I looked up some of the, the artists first that you had mm-hmm. listed on there, like Periphery yeah. Tool. And a lot of it was more melodic, like it wasn't screaming. <coughs> and it was kind of what I would be interested in doing if I was to pursue being in a band. And so I just literally emailed and was like, Hi, so my name is blah blah blah, and just did this whole little intro paragraph and just sent it off, and then I don't think you read it. I so think- yeah, this is this is how much I remember. Wow, like, you had emailed on like a Thursday, and I didn't see it until I think either Sunday or Monday. Because I also messaged the the Instagram account. You did okay, yeah. and I was That's definitely my fault. <laughs> no, I think I might have. I think I might have messaged the Instagram first. Possibly. Okay. Okay. And then I emailed. Uh, the email is what I ended up yeah. seeing. We I saw it like days after. Yeah, and since we weren't actively like performing at that time, I yeah. wasn't very constant in checking my yeah. <laughs> DMs. <laughs> Not active in performing, but you want to find a vocalist. And it's like, yeah. Like, yeah. like, do we make it easy like, on ourselves? Hello? Jesus, like, well, we audition. Like, <laughs> we did audition. Uh, half we dozen, a a dozen people. people or so. Right. Um, we were just trying to find the right fit. Yeah. yeah. And then whenever, so whenever you did email us, we had, you know, low-key stalked you on, you know, what yeah. available media you had presented. And we, and we met were for just the like... first time in person at a Renaissance Festival. Yes. Oh, yes. Because oh, I wanted, like, a public space where we could just hang out and mm-hmm. just talk yeah. a little bit. And so I was in full Ren Faire gear whenever we first met. It was so funny because we stalked, we, we didn't know her prior, and we kind of stalked her at uh, socials, and we were like, I think this is her, because there was a video of you performing an opera. And I was like, that'd be really oh, wow. cool if it's her. But I don't expect that to be her, because why would, like, an opera singer <laughs> well, just randomly yes, be is so <laughs> uh, So then we were, like, walking around that the medieval fair, and we're, we're kind of, like, looking around, like, where is she? Like, we know what, she, like, the Facebook profile picture looks like, and that was only our only frame of reference. And then, like yeah. you said, on top of being in costume and everything, yeah. Yeah. it's like, oh, God. And then eventually we did run, we walked down a lane, and we saw her from a distance with, like, a bunch of her friends, and then, like, you know, like, we were just kind of like, oh, this is going to be awesome. Uh, let's wait till everybody's here. So we yeah. kind of pretended we didn't see and turned around and walked away. And we waited for the rest of the band to arrive so that we could, like, go up to her as, like, a group. Like, <laughs> There's strength in numbers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so cool that you did opera sing. We'll do opera singing. I'm yeah. sure you can still do it. Um, there's a, I don't know if you guys have heard of Menudo. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a boy band from like back yeah. in the day that they would form them like from a TV show. It's where Ricky Martin came from and everything. Yeah. So there's a new generation of Manulo that they're obviously trying to keep these kids safe. Like there's so much that have been that has come out about like how they've been abused and whatever. So these new mm-hmm. kids, it's like protect them at all costs. Mm-hmm. I got to interview them, awesome. and one of them, I was like, oh, how'd you guys get into you know singing or whatever? And one of them was like, well, I'm a classical singer, and I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I'd sing opera, and I was like. No, do it. Yeah. This kid's like, wait, wait, I'm a little rusty. And then just proceeds to wow the entire room. That's awesome. <laughs> now, this room isn't that big, but if you want to wow us, I'm kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> Me drinking my mom. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the cutest thing. This kid's like probably like 14. And he, so you know, cute. he's like, I have no warm up. And it was beautiful. I'll show you afterwards. It was That's gorgeous. Awesome. So is it Manula with new people or just Manula like? No, it's it, the name is Menudo. They call it the new generation okay. of Menudo. Okay. So it's the same thing, just 
yeah. new members because they would always cycle them out when they weren't like teens anymore because it was a little teeny boy band. Oh, yeah, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it, there's a lot of drama behind it, but at least this new generation is trying to seem wholesome. And yeah. when I did go interview them, I was like, oh, great, all your moms are with you. So many green flags. I'm so happy. Yeah. <laughs> and their PR was like super nice. And I was like, great, okay. Awesome. But no, that's insane. How did you get started singing and whatnot? Like from um, what age? And I, so I kind of started formally taking voice lessons whenever I was like 15, 16. Um, I was never, should I be closer to the mic? Sorry. Probably a little bit. Oh, yeah. I was <laughs> just like, at the level. Um, <laughs> But I didn't really take it seriously until I was having to make a decision about college. And I thought I was going to go into cinematography or something. But I was like, hmm, I kind of like singing and I feel like I'm decent at it. Let me just audition at some colleges and try to do that. And so I, I don't know. I just started getting really into listening to opera. I thought it was fascinating. I started fangirling about all the big opera singers at the time. I was just... Admittedly, I'm of the generation of Fam the Opera, whatever that was coming out. And so I think there's, it's interesting to see a kind of new resurgence of opera singer generation that is inspired by Phantom whenever we were younger. Um, and so that was really kind of how I got into it. And I just fell in love with the art form. I love how dramatic it is. I love how much effort um, and collaboration that goes into making such a big production happen. Um, yeah, so that was kind of how that happened. And I just... Did my undergrad, I did my master's at UF, and then found Apex, and so... That's yeah, so cool. I just do that, and then also am in a metal band now, so, yeah. Super fun. We are so fun open to your perspective and your yeah. you know, your style in opera. We, we embrace that, yeah. like, holistically. It's it's really cool to be able to have, you know, that element of our band. In, you yeah, know. We are all big into, like, Evanescence and stuff like that when yeah, we were yeah. younger. <laughs> and we, like, so, who we was it? Saw them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> couple days ago. <laughs> yeah, it was so very good. Cool. Yes. <laughs> wonderful seeing her again. She played at Rockville at Evanescence Amy Lee. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was very cool seeing. I can imagine she's like amazing live because it's she one thing to hear goodness. Yeah. So good. and, then, and then Amy Lee's also really good live. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Talking about you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> funny, 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 funny. Yeah, but I appreciate that they're so just open-minded to whatever I want to do because there were some things that were done a different way because obviously it was a different singer before mm -hmm. um, and I'm not a man so I can't produce some of the noises that Caleb was making before yeah. that were his own style and so mm -hmm. they were just so open to me kind of having my own twist on things and interpretation and melding in some opera here and there like just for the drama, you know, so I appreciate that they've been so open about that. I think that's for the, the growth of the band. And in general, yeah. we see music nowadays that it's not just one genre. So, you know, why not throw some opera into some rock? And, exactly. Yeah. You know. But I think what was so cool is that Caleb also kind of set the stage, at least for some songs, where it almost, it, it, in my opinion, is, is better with a female vocalist. Some of the, you know, higher, you know, falsetto things that he was yeah, doing, he those wrote elements. Yeah, a lot of things in his falsetto. Yeah. <clears throat> and he did yeah. that very intentionally. Yeah. And I think whenever we were searching for a new singer, we didn't realize that at the time, that a female vocalist really would kind of fit perfectly into a lot of these songs. And I think one in particular is Bargain. Like, that, yeah. that is a lot yeah. of falsetto that Caleb did. And then whenever you went to learn it, it, you know, you can kind of take that and just kind of run with it. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, it's a lot more within you know, maybe your range. Yeah. But yeah, it's very cool. Very cool to see kind of those seeds already in the music, and then whenever Senga came in, it kind of just filled that, you know, perfectly. <laughs> and I love a female-fronted band. By the way, when you just said Amy Lee too, and I'm just like <laughs> nodding, like yeah, it gave me war flashbacks that last week I was like covering an event, and I couldn't hear the people because there was oh. bands playing in the background. <laughs> but I, we had like a rig that it just recorded the audio as if nothing was going on in the background. So I'm going back and I'm hearing these interviews. And some people said the funniest shit and just no <laughs> reaction. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> or or just face. smile Jeez. and nod. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, I crowd. couldn't hear it. <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyways, I love a female-fronted band because, you know, feminism, girl power, why not? Yeah. Um, have you experienced any sort of misogyny in the scene up here? So Go off. Um, <laughs> within, so for the most part, just to preface, people are very, very kind and kinder than you would expect with I guess like the visuals of metal and rock a lot of people assume that they're like really mean and really hardcore people but they're generally some of the kindest most just accommodating people I've ever met um and so I don't want to speak like too harshly because I know that there is some bad stereotypes but um yeah <laughs> um I think it's I mean it's better now than I 
like it was 10 years ago even. Um, but it's still like with a lot of female fronted bands, I know that there's been a lot of issues with meet and greets and with um, people being just generally creepy. Um, we had an instance a couple months ago where we were taking a picture with someone after a show and he assaulted me. And it was like completely out of left field. It was in broad, like the, uh, what's it called? The venue lights were on. It was a well-lit space. It was just in front of everyone, just was not even. You didn't even yeah. try to hide it. No, didn't yeah. even try to hide it. And wow. I just like, I kind of went to freeze mode and just kind of panicked and didn't say anything about it. And then I was mad that I didn't say anything about it until after the fact. It was just, you know, it was a whole big spiral, but it's sucks because it kind of reminded me that these types of things can literally happen anywhere mm -hmm. and people aren't going to be shy about it. It can happen in broad daylight. People can just be weird and it doesn't matter mm -hmm. even the type of people, if it's in the metal scene, if it's in the rock scene, if it's in the pop scene, like mm -hmm. people are people and they're going to be weird, you know? Yeah. And so I think it was not a blessing in disguise, but kind of because it allowed us as a band to really come together because they've never had mm -hmm. to work with a female vocalist before and um, have to talk about these types of things and address like, okay, how are we as a band going to make sure that this doesn't yeah. happen again? Oh, and wow. yeah, like what is, what is the steps that we're going to do whenever we're talking to people after shows or how can we look out for you? And just generally extend that to every other member in the band. Like how can we just protect each other as a unit and just, you know. Yeah, it sucks that we have to, but yeah. trying to yeah. come up with ways to mitigate anything potentially happening in the future was definitely a big discussion. Yeah. yeah. Thankfully, though, I feel like nowadays there isn't as much toxicity in the scene of like, oh, there shouldn't be female fronted bands. Like, that's not even really a thing anymore. People are like, hell yeah, a female singer now. It's not it's not as much like yeah. you shouldn't be here. It's more so just people being kind of creepy. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry that happened. And, yeah. I and mean, just in general. Yeah. Like, I am too. But I, like like I said, I'm I'm glad that it gave us just the space to be able to talk about that type of thing and just unpack well, like how to move on from that yeah and i love to hear that you guys were super i mean i wouldn't expect anything else but that you guys were right. supportive and there for yeah. her and everything it, yeah. it just gave me like all another war flashback but not you know a funny one <laughs> yeah. I, when i was i was out doing like a photo shoot for my master's graduation and this it was in uh palm beach county and this old creepy guy just walks up puts his arm around me and he's like take a picture of me to his friend and i was like can you not fucking touch me like yeah. Yeah. some people are so entitled so to weird. like yeah, yeah, yeah just get in your space and, and then he like, got upset yeah. and i'm like dude you're touching you're in my personal space yeah okay, so Leave. i run the instagram so i also kind of try to bat away comments here and there that i might that's why see. i'm glad that i'm not logged into the instagram because i'm like i don't want to see it <laughs> that's the yeah, one thing because no. i guess when you have you know the anonymity of the internet a lot of times yeah. people will uh, be vocal about things that they probably wouldn't say to your face but, yeah, yeah some people are just um, too out of pocket but anyways yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but like you said the vast majority though yeah for the, for the most part people are just like very very kind very yeah. accepting of me um and like i don't i don't feel like anyone's been like oh like it was better whenever there wasn't a female vocalist like i i think generally no i don't with, think anybody would be a jerk yeah to say and that even with bands like spirit box being in the forefront of like the the scene right now and um even amy lee was just kind of a trailblazer for right. female fronted bands like yeah we've had a lot of good people in the scene i was just listening to paramore on the way here and i was like oh my god what an inspiration she was for me whenever i was younger just that was me these, too yeah. yeah just seeing these strong women at the forefront so yeah, I, I think the Misery Business music video is, like, engraved into my mind. Right. Like, it was right free. It was super fun to play on guitar. I love that song. So good. You were saying, I'm sorry? Uh, it's also just really cool to see um, even bands that aren't female-fronted but have female musicians. Yeah. You know, it was, yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. just yeah. blend. the blending is so much. Yeah. Pop Evil's drummer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pop Evil has a female yeah. drummer. That's amazing. Yeah, She's even so at the... The event I was at last week with the with the local bands, there was a female drummer in one of the bands, and I was like, she's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> I just I can't help but get excited whenever I see female musicians Very like doing the thing in live settings. I'm like, Nita yeah, Strauss, yes. yeah, Alice yeah, Cooper. Nita Strauss. Oh my gosh, do you know Nita Strauss? <laughs> no. Oh, it's a hurricane, Nita. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's she's um a like really successful guitarist, and she's been playing with the Alice Cooper band on and off, and she left to go play with Demi Lovato on their new tour. Fun. And then rejoined Alice Cooper, and it's just like, oh my god, she's incredible, and I just love watching shreds. her. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> she just shreds like Odd. crazy. She's incredible. So that's insane. Yeah, gotta learn how to fan. flip my guitar. I know. Yeah, she's like flipping that around like behind her head, and just yeah, yeah. She's I got the wireless now, so I can. She's a badass. Just gotta practice. I, I need to look up a video now. <laughs> yeah. 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 
please do. I have so many recordings of that woman. The, the amount of times I've seen her with the Alice Cooper band. Like, Alice is literally right in front of me, and I'm like, is it worth me? She's so, so, like, humble, too. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's, she's just really person. down to earth and cool. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay, so what's you guys' favorite part of being in Apex? So you go one by one, because, of course, everybody can like a different aspect of the band differently. I'll make you go first. Oh, for for me, um, I've always even you know before staying in the band, um, I I always felt like uh, Apex was an opportunity to just challenge myself constantly as a musician and as a bass player and as a performer too. So um, I feel like this band in particular gives the the amount of flexibility and then the challenge to be able to grow as a musician, and that is really my favorite uh, musically. Um, in, in just terms of the being in a band and camaraderie, I fucking love these people so much. They're like my favorite people. Um, so yeah, that that those two elements for me um, make this one of my just favorite parts of living. You know what I mean? So yeah, this is this is a really cool thing for me. Uh, I think definitely like he was saying, the flexibility. I think one of the things that makes it so successful is everybody can come up with whatever idea or thought they have. And it'll be taken seriously one way or the other. We might work on a song. Uh, our drummer will come with an entire song that he's written on piano or something, and we'll turn it into an actual song. Or mm -hmm. like Caleb in the middle of practice a couple of years ago, just sang a melody to a riff that I was like jokingly doing, and we turned it into one of our favorite current songs, Bargain. Is that um, right? Yeah. Really? <laughs> and then we were talking about uh, one of our friends is in a band called The Pine Drape, and we're like, we're going to make oh. this Pine Drape riff. And then that was, that's basically the end that's of the, the song. End, was that's this, the end of Bargain. Yeah, is that really that slow? Really? Yes, that yeah. we, we, <laughs> we saw slow Pine Drape. We, oh, yeah. we played with Pine Drape at the Shed Show. We were like, this, they have <laughs> this really cool slow sludgy thing. We're like, yeah. we need to do, yeah, that oh, turned into the Pine Drape. That, that was cool. the Pine Drape riff. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> things like that. Yeah. Where <laughs> basically anybody can bring up anything. Like half the song is written by this and half the song is written by this person. It, it's There's no um, letter of the law in terms of, like you were saying, genres, like, you know, we'll do any type of music. We don't try to pigeonhole ourselves into like a single sound or anything like that. And then, like you said, just the people in general, because I've only ever been in one other band that lasted for about six or seven years, um, 2008 to like 12 or 15, um, uh, that that's why it was successful is the people in the band you get along with and they're really good people. It's another. It's one thing to have like a talent. It's another thing to like fit together as a group. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We don't just play music together. We also do oh, yeah, we do everything together. hang out and, <laughs> just and just enjoy each other's company yeah. genuinely. Yeah. And it is. Yeah, you hang out sometimes. Thing. You know. Maybe on the weekends. <laughs> 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 you know, like, like, you're crazy rock, though. to be interviewed for. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I definitely agree with all of that. Like, it, they literally have become a family, and I kind of wasn't expecting that. I wasn't sure how it would businessy and what we're just going to meet up and play and you know perform together but it's just like it's literally like a family and also for me like because I grew up not grew up but I've had this background in opera it's a very kind of rigid structure with classical singing and um it's so specific and they're like oh there's a slight American R in this one thing or oh you need to trill this one part it's just so detail oriented to be able to have something that is just so free and so just raw and um, just comfortable to be able to do and just to be able to perform with people and play with people. It's just so cathartic for me. And um, even since I've joined y'all, I've had music professors tell me that my opera singing has benefited from it because I think it just loosened things up and it just made me more comfortable and grounded in myself to where I'm like, it's not a huge deal. It's, it's not, it's not as important to get everything completely perfect all the time. Like I can just relax and just have fun with something. And this is it just really, performance overall, but like it's, yeah. it's more than just singing. It's yeah. Like, it's just really yeah. kind of grounded yeah. me in myself and just gotten me a lot more comfortable with and performing. You can yeah. pull like some of the theatrics and everything into a, like live performance with us that probably wouldn't be there with yeah, somebody that doesn't have that experience. So yeah. It's... Yeah. The, the combining of the two has been very interesting. I wasn't sure how the crossover would be, but mm -hmm. so far I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. So I think it's because of the type of people, like you guys were very welcoming of yeah. it. So it was like, okay, let's put this to use and not just kind of like, okay, throw away what you know and not just sing what we have. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Which is really, really cool. And it's must be fun from you guys' point to see her grow as a oh, vocalist, as a performer. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to see you guys live. Like, that's all the vibe. Like, you guys are, like, so in sync. I feel like that a show is just going to be, like, cool. June 25th. <laughs> June 25th. Yeah. June 25th. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We'll play with uh, Quit the Industry, Issue of Destiny. Um, that's the next show. 
Yeah. And then this one's going away overseas for a little to bit. Italy. Yeah. Have fun. We'll, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Start I'm wrapping up the album, recording oh, all that. Gosh, yeah, so the time going. you get back, it's here you go. <laughs> yeah. You're ready I'm to hoping, record. Yeah, just ready and for then, the vocals. Yes. Imagine yeah, we have this heartfelt this. conversation. And she's like, I like Italy too much. Bye, guys. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> Don't tell him that. He has abandonment. <laughs> Pizza too. <laughs> <laughs> so the song you guys mentioned that the songwriting process is very fluid. It's you know whoever comes up with something and brings mm-hmm. everybody brings their ideas to the table. So I won't ask what the process is like because that's what it's like. What is your favorite song that you guys have written? I mean, we're allowed to pick favorites, right? So I think sure. we've mentioned it a couple times. Um, uh, the bargain is one definitely one of my favorites um, in terms of the the entire song. Um, from from start to finish, I think there's some really wonderful vocal things going on there. There's some really cool bass stuff. Uh, there's some cool in sync stuff between you and me that I that I really like, and we can kind of also just it up the concept the of that one is really cool because <clears throat> it's literally a conversation back and forth between death and someone who doesn't want to die. He's literally like bargaining. It's bargaining for his for, for his life. life. He's like, well, do these things. I'll do this. I'll do this. If you just yeah. don't don't let me die. And death is not necessarily evil per se. He's just doing his job, you know, or their yeah. their job, you know. Um, and so it's not up to me to give you more life. It, I'm just here to, to you take you. To carry it out, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think that one is a forefront, forerunner for me and also LV. Um, LV, that was, that was what I was going to say yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, that one's the heaviest that I definitely yeah, enjoyed going crazy on that one. It's heavy and also it's like based on the Alien movies. And so it's just so it just interesting and it's like nothing I've ever sung before. So I just, I love that song. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. With the, with the bargain, it's cool. You mentioned that death wasn't evil because it's like, it just made me realize, like, I don't think death is evil. Like, yeah. you think about those people who, like, need assisted suicide for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's, it's they don't look at death like as something evil. But obviously this person in the song wants to keep their life. Yeah, um, right. Yeah, because you can empathize with that person, mm-hmm. but you can also empathize with death at the same time. And that's what I think makes the song so interesting. And, you know. Yeah, and especially at the end, too, because he's literally saying Yeah, he's no literally, there's this whole moment where he's just screaming for his life. Like, yeah. no, please don't. Yeah, it's just this whole, like, begging, please don't let me die. But... Is what it is, really. Yeah. I'm also a really big fan. We have a song called Sphinx. Sphinx. Uh, Sphinx. Play it on some seven string guitars. It's it's sort of you know it's got this harmonic minor kind of Egyptian sound. Seven string guitar. Yes, we have a couple of them. They're super fun. Uh, We're starting to play on some drop and sharp stuff. Uh, I do love Sphinx because of the variety of parts. And then at the bridge at the end, we added like this entire section that didn't exist prior to Stenger joining the band and. Things like in Bargain and the end of Sphinx get to really sort of showcase your ability because I guys love mirror each other. harmonizing, like yes. hitting a really high note my guitar and having somebody that can accompany it with their voice. <laughs> so like, we do like a little guitar and voice duet. Yeah. Of, like I do like a little operatic moment and then he comes in and then we duet with it. Yeah, um, and it's really, cool. I do like the oh. ending of Sphinx. That's really fun. So it's like yeah. fun to just play yeah. basically. <laughs> However, Sphinx is so long. There's so many lyrics. I have to use a book. Well, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, so it's like the theatrics, riddle. but it's also functional. I know. I was like, let's be drama and have a book and also have the lyrics printed on it because it's so <laughs> it's long. Like, and there's no repeats. Out. There's only one word that repeats in the it entire song. Wow. It's Traveler. Yeah. Tra- traveler. And then that's the only <laughs> that's the only lyric that well, is repeats like the entire time. It's like about the riddle time. of the like the riddle of the Sphinx and everything. Yeah. It's a general oh, but, concept. Oh well, gosh, it's kind of so like lyrics. I don't know if you listen to Law Dispute. No. Second, I, when I fixate on like one band, I'll mention like every interview throughout the day. But La Dispute, uh, their song King Park. I don't know if you guys have listened to it. It's like a seven minute song. It's telling like a story. It doesn't repeat anything. Mm-hmm. There's really no chorus or anything. And it's just yeah. like, I, I mean, I have the whole thing memorized. But <laughs> and look, I probably do, but I'm just so anxious at this point. Now I'm just like, oh God, if I lose what place I'm at, it's it's game over. Right. <laughs> have a little book, like, oh, drama. And Child also, where am I? <laughs> yeah. Just go back to Traveler, you'll find Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Similarly, a lot of our songs are in that sort of seven-minute it's seven yeah. minute area, yeah. yeah. Okay, Pretend and in like, like oh, thirty goodness. years, you could pull out reading glasses. To read. I know. I'm like, here's a tale from my apex. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, it's been awesome. I don't know if you have a message for our senior citizen podcast friends. If you want to promote anything, it's your shameless plug moment. <laughs> Well, like uh, like I said, we have a show uh, June 25th at High Dive. We'll see if it comes um, out before then. We're also... Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. It's this is going to be out in a couple weeks. We're in the process of recording our first 
full length album with Sanga. Uh, well, yeah, yeah full length Sanga album. Sanga on vocals. Period. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, we're excited to get that going here, and we're hoping sort of August or so to hit the ground running and just start playing show after show after show and have some music to promote. Um, mm-hmm. We've got our website. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're on all social media at Apex Band Music. So follow yeah, us Instagram. on Apex TikTok, Band Music. On Instagram. Is it Apex Band Music? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You're like, who did that? <laughs> Facebook is the awesome Apex Band. But, oh, yes. Uh, yeah. And then our own website, which is apexbandgainesville.com. Yeah. Dot com. Dot com. Um, there's a very popular video game named Apex Legends that takes up a lot of internet searching. So we we are not Apex. Apex. <laughs> yes, it's although. Uh, but think know, about people who could stumble upon <laughs> Apex, Googling the game, yeah. and then they're like, wait, so are they inspired? We should cover and get our the music song. In the game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we actually have, like, whenever we released, so we have two songs that not with our old singer, and whenever we first released them on Spotify, they got par- compartmentalized with with a different Apex band like that a, had like it's like a European like, uh, like an EDM, EDM kind style, of. and we were like, oh, oh, this is incorrect. Let's change it. But then we thought for a second. We were like, hmm, they have like twenty thousand monthly listeners. They do. What if we just <laughs> leave it there? And some EDM person is like, what's this new Apex song that they just released? Oh, it's a metal band. Well, let me listen to it anyways. <laughs> and we did get some listens as a result. <laughs> it was. Very strategic. Yes. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I mean, yeah. if the opportunity's there, why not take yeah. it? Yeah. So. Once we actually record everything, then it'll all be on Spotify and yeah. you know all the streaming platforms soon ish. Yes. A few months. Yeah. But go check us out on Spotify. We do still have songs. It's just not with this one yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we'll be here to support and follow you guys on your journey and releasing mm-hmm. these albums and EPs and whatever it is that you're gonna do. Mm-hmm. And we'll catch you guys next time on a Senior Citizen podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.